Hello everyone, this is Prasad. On behalf of An Academy, I welcome all of you for another session on hybrid electric vehicles. Till now, we have understood various concepts in hybrid electric vehicles, right from how hybridization is done, the series parallel hybrid configuration, what are different powertrains, how electric powertrain works, what are different drive cycles. We have also understood different types of motors, different types of batteries, certification, everything. Now it's time to understand the fuel cell technology because in India, the time is changing. All of you know what are batteries we are manufacturing, lithium ion batteries. The cells are being imported from other countries. We as Indians are not having lithium ion resources and hence we have to import the lithium ion cells and manufacture batteries out of it. So there is one more alternative for the lithium ion battery energy storage and also the main source of as use as a main source of energy that is hydrogen hydrogen so let's understand the fuel cell technology how hydrogen fuel cells are being used and how they can be used more effectively for hybrid electric vehicles and electric vehicles till now we have understood the electric vehicle hybrid electric vehicle how different components are there how categorization is done based on the configuration, right? P0, P1, P2, P3, P4. We have understood mild hybrids, strong hybrids, plug-in hybrids. We have also understood uh, various schematics of hybrid electric vehicles, considering the series hybrid, the parallel hybrid. We have understood the application that series hybrid electric vehicles are used in case of electric buses, which are hybrid, or military trucks, because series hybrid requires a lot of space. We have understood that parallel hybrid is being used in mostly case of the electric four wheelers. And we have also understood the powertrain sizing. We have understood the overview of electric powertrain, which consists of charger, onboard charger, there is a battery, there is a converter, which is a bi-directional and there is an electrical motor. We have also understood further that how <coughs> exactly electric power flow takes place in case of hybrid electric vehicle or pure electric vehicle. It has a high voltage, it has a low voltage, high voltage mainly for traction purpose, low voltage for running auxiliaries. We have also understood various definitions and fundamentals of battery. Battery is an energy storage device which actually makes sure that chemical energy, uh, electricity gets stored in form of chemical energy and when you are uh, taking out the electrical energy, there is an electrochemical reaction. So battery is a device that converts the chemical energy of contained within its active materials directly into electrical energy. Now the question may arise in your mind sir why we are revising battery. It is very important for us to revise the battery because we are going to discuss fuel cells today. The fuel cell technology is little bit similar to uh, what you can say battery technology because battery technology also involves electrochemical reactions. The fuel cell technology also uses same but there in case of uh, fuel cell technology the major source is hydrogen. Okay, so there is conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy in case of batteries. So battery symbol is like this and actually battery is a combination of n number of cells. We connect cells in series on parallel to form a battery pack and I hope all of you remember we have understood various types of uh, cells of the battery. It can be uh, what you can say LFP that is lithium ferrophosphate. It can be NMC that is nickel manganese cobalt. And based on this, there are different voltage levels, standard voltage levels. And as per our requirement, we can connect these cells in series and parallel to obtain the desired battery pack voltage. Further, we have understood there are two electrodes. One is an anode, one is a cathode. <clears throat> and these electrodes are inert in nature, but have definite polarity or terminal during the reaction. We have also understood that electrolyte is a medium in which these electrodes are placed. And this medium, this is the medium, electrolyte is a medium which is used to carry electrons from one electrode to the uh, other electrode. So it is, you can say, transport mechanism. Hmm. Also, we have understood there are different types of electrolytes. Those are mostly in form of liquids. Hmm. There are solid electrolytes also. But mainly, if you are considering the liquid electrolytes, these are dissolved in salts, acids or alkalis and that are required for ionic conduction. There is, uh, there is a medium that you required for flow of electrons inside the cell and that is nothing but the electrolyte. Then we have understood how discharging takes place. We have understood at anode oxidation happens. That means it loses the electron. At cathode it accepts the electron. 
okay so uh, as it leads to this process the flow of electron is a flow of electron is there from the external circuit also so basically the electron starts moving from higher potential to the lower potential during uh, any condition hmm? since the electrons are absorbed in cathode we we said that anode loses the electron there is oxidation and cathode uh, accepts the electron as per electrical engineering concepts electrode that is having more electrons will have more electropotential this cathode is considered as a positive in some of the reference books textbooks or research paper you may find cathode as a negative they considered anode as a positive and cathode as a negative but you don't need to get confused you can follow either of these you can keep simple concept in mind as anode is losing the electron and cathode is accepting the electrons cathode is going to have more electropotential and hence it is considered as a positive hence current starts flowing from higher potential to a lower potential that is from cathode to anode and hence in some of the cases you will find there are two currents that are stated one is called as electron current and one is called as conventional current conventional current we say it flows from positive towards negative electron current we say flow, flow from negative towards the positive so these are the basic terminologies that you have to keep in your mind when you are discussing the energy storage hmm? let's move forward and understand what exactly is the fuel cell technology now as i already gave you an hint i tell you uh, i told you the importance why fuel cells are necessary is because in india still whatever electric vehicle or hybrid electric vehicles are getting manufactured the battery packs most are most of these are imported so we import the lithium ion cells we connect them in series and parallel to form a battery pack so right now electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle technology in india is very much costly because the main cost is of battery is of energy storage and it is being imported if you find an alternative that will help you to have energy storage in india only like government of india is working on advanced chemistry cell battery that is acc battery but that is still in research phase still the companies uh, have not started manufacturing the acc batteries till now we have to focus on some other alternative that will help us to uh, what you can say uh, come forward and use electric vehicles so here we are going to consider one of such alternative that is called as fuel cell so what is fuel cell fuel cell ev it is also called as fcv hmm? or fuel cell electric vehicle fcev is an electric vehicle that uses fuel cell sometimes in combination with small battery or a super capacitor to power its on board electric motor i hope you remember the second or third lecture in which we understood what is a hybrid electric vehicle it is a electric vehicle which is using two or more sources of energy for traction purpose but at least one of them should be electrical so here the fuel cell electric vehicle is a electric vehicle which, which is using hydrogen fuel cell but along with that it is either using the battery as a energy storage or a super capacitor as a energy storage so fuel cell cannot store the energy from regeneration so it has to have some smaller battery or ultra capacitor that will store the energy after regeneration fuel cell is energy provider means it is having hydrogen as a input and output is electricity and water that electricity can be used to run the motor but when motor is acting as a generator it cannot store electricity in uh, the fuel cell so for that you need a battery or a ultra capacitor which will store this energy hmm? and further this energy will be used to drive the motor okay so fuel cell in the vehicles is a device that generate electricity from the electrochemical reaction why we give you the revision of battery because battery also is a electrochemical device hmm? so fuel cells in the electric vehicle is a device that generates electricity using electrochemical reaction between oxygen from air and compressed hydrogen so here there are two inputs what are two inputs one is the hydrogen and one is the oxygen hmm? so when these two come together most of the fuel cell vehicles are classified as zero emission electric vehicles and they emit only water and heat so please understand over here whatever electrochemical reactions are taking place in lead acid battery the lithium ion battery are little bit complicated in case of fuel cell 
these reactions are quite simpler because the input is oxygen and hydrogen and the output is water and heat along with the electricity which we use to run the vehicle. The first commercially produced hydrogen fuel cell automobile that was by Hyundai iX35 FCEV in 2013 and in 2015 later Toyota came up with their fuel cell electric car that is Marai. Okay, And now recently Honda has also entered in the manufacturing of fuel cell electric vehicles.